subwoofers. What do they do? Do you need one? How many? Where do you put them? Should we get sealed or ported? Well, in this edition of Home Theater for the Masses, that's what we're talking about, subwoofers. Subwoofers are the largest speaker in a home theater system. They reproduce the lowest frequencies in a movie's soundtrack. These low frequencies are known as bass. They produce not only the lowest notes in the movie's musical score, but also the rumble. Do you need one? If you don't live in an apartment, then yes, you need at the very least one. Now let's look at some examples of the bass content in some movie soundtracks. This is a spectrogram of the low frequency effects track of Flight of the Phoenix. This chart is showing 20 hertz at the bottom, all the way up to 90 hertz at the top. There is content above 90 hertz, but we're mainly concerned about the area that our front and left and right speakers won't be able to reproduce. There's also content below 20 hertz, but I'll get to that later. The colors represent how loud the sound is, with yellow being the loudest. Here are some clips from a selection of movies. So how many do you need and how big do they need to be? Ah, that's the crux of the question. If you go to the THX website, you'll find that THX recommends getting the biggest subwoofer that your living space and budget will allow. I agree. Oh, hold on there. We're not done yet. One thing the THX page did not point out, which I think is important, is that you should have at least two subwoofers. Now that doesn't mean you need to spend twice as much. In fact, I'd say it's better to get two smaller subwoofers for the same price as one big one. Now don't get me wrong, if you can afford two big subwoofers, that's even better. But if your budget will allow for only one subwoofer, it would be better to go with two smaller ones for the same price. The reason for this is because low frequencies tend to behave badly in rooms. They create what are called standing waves, which are locations inside a room where bass tones can be really loud in one area and inaudible in another. For example, here's a video of me walking around my theater while playing a test tone. You can hear the tone get louder and quieter based on my location within the room. This is due to standing waves. Here's another video where I'm increasing the frequency. This is an example of the room's frequency response. In my room, my frequency response is okay, but it could be better. For space reasons, I have both my subs next to each other behind the screen. But I would get better response if I had one sub in the back of the room. For my situation, this would probably be the most ideal solution. But since I don't want to end up with toys inside my subwoofer, I have to have them behind the screen. So multiple subwoofers, if placed optimally, will give you better room acoustics than one subwoofer. For the best response, you would want four subwoofers placed in the corners of a room, but not many of us have either the money or space to afford four subs, and so you could do two subwoofers placed ideally on opposing mid-wall locations. If you can't do that, then ideally you would place two subwoofers along the same wall at the quarter width points. At this point, you may notice that my subs don't look like they're optimally placed, and you're right. While I was researching my video, I discovered that my subs are too close together, and so I would probably get better output if I moved them. But then my main speakers are too close together. 
so I may have to compromise, but there are some different configurations I'll be able to try at some point in the future. If you only have one sub, the best way I've heard to determine the ideal location is to do what is called the base crawl. Basically what you do is sit your subwoofer in the spot where you'll normally sit. Then while playing music, you crawl around the room listening for the spot where the bass sounds the best. Once you found this spot, you set the subwoofer there and theoretically it should sound good at your primary listening position. And so finally we need to talk about the two main types of subwoofers, sealed and ported. This is one of those topics that is debated ad nauseum, but here's the basics. Which one you need depends on your requirements. Ported subwoofers will give you good output down to lower frequencies than sealed subwoofers can. However, they will be larger. Sealed subwoofers are small and can extend down low, but they need powerful amplifiers to do it. Now there is an idea out there that sealed subwoofers sound tighter than ported ones. This idea originated from poorly designed ported subwoofers that sound boomy. They were boomy because they were relatively the same size as a sealed subwoofer. In order for a ported subwoofer to sound good, it has to be larger. So when you're shopping for subwoofers, keep this in mind if you see a ported subwoofer that looks to be the same size as a sealed subwoofer. Now, remember how we looked at those spectrograms earlier? Let's take another look. At the bottom of the chart, the content is at 20 Hz. What happens if we look underground beyond the commonly accepted audible range? There's a lot of content down there. But in order to experience that content, you either need to spend a lot of money or build your own subwoofer. And that's what I'll talk about in the next video. So that's it for this relatively short edition of Home Theater for the Masses. If you haven't looked at some of the other videos I have had, you may want to check them out. And as I duck to miss this next video coming up, uh, make sure to uh, do the like and subscribe thing and all that. It helps me out and helps me know that people are interested in watching this stuff. So see you next time.